The federal government has been urged to make policies that will boost finance sector investment in the nation's financial sector. This call was made by stakeholders at a one-day finance roundtable discussion held in Lagos. One of the key thrusts of the conversation was debt management and the proliferation of loan, up, loan apps. According to a survey by Piggyvest, almost four in ten Nigerians are in debt and 26% of them are indebted to loan apps. Also speaking, the head of Innovation Unit, Nigeria Data Protection Commission, Chidera Ikeokonkwo, highlighted the Commission's commitment to ensuring that predatory loan apps that violate data protection laws are brought to book. Yes, as a regulator of data processing in Nigeria, we're working with all sectors of the economy. And um, one thing that we're focused on this year is capacity building and um, awareness creation. And the two of them go hand in hand. And it's something that is not just for this year, it will be something that we're going to continue to do um, throughout the year and even in the coming years. Um, because we live in a world that is interconnected. A lot of people are sharing their personal information um, with fintech platforms, with other commerce platforms. Um, these guys are what we call data controllers and data processors. And so there's a need for Nigerians to know what is um, what goes on when they exchange things like their name, their email address, their phone number with. Um, unfortunately, um, spend now, save later, I think is easy to say. Uh, but in, realistically speaking, I don't think that's possible. Bigger things will mean that banks, financial institutions, um, fintech companies like ours will have to collaborate more with the government and real estate um, companies and agencies who are interested in that goal of closing the housing deficit. Stakeholders at the event stressed the need for collaborative efforts to enhance financial inclusion, literacy and integrity nationwide. Nigerians, no matter how much we want to say live in the moment because things are going to get harder or something will get more expensive, all our payments are done in cash, in bulk and upfront. And that means that if you're buying a car, if you're going to school, if you're renting a house, you know, whatever it is you're doing, you actually, by virtue of living here or being from here, have to save up. Like in the West, you can say spend now, save later because your rent is paid monthly. Here, you know that we pay our rent one year or two years up front. How do you spend now, save later, if you don't have your rent all saved up? And we, we have some economic factors in terms of rate of inflation, in terms of um, rate of exchange rates. Uh, but um, there are certain things that can help to improve on this. From the government side, obviously it's, it's obvious that um, the government um, it needs and is also making efforts to improve on the existing infrastructure. We believe that if there's an improvement in the infrastructure, this would affect uh, production. You know, and once we have production, um, this will ultimately reduce our current level of importation. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.